Hello, I'm Richard Coulter with Fujitsu. I'm the head of marketing and I have with me Todd Carter, our head of fulfillment. His team is in control of supply chain, component supply, and you may have heard in recent news how big of a challenge these issues have been across all industries from automotive through ICT. So we thought we'd bring Todd in to talk about what he's learned over these past two years, um, where he sees the supply chain now and where it's going. So welcome, Todd. Thank you, Rich. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say it's been a very challenging two plus years. Um, the positive is we are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Things are starting to return back to some normalcy. And uh, personally, I've, I've uh, gained a lot of knowledge and uh, learned a lot of things through all this. And I've learned, uh, one, how amazing uh, Fujitsu, the supply chain is, and um, it's, it's what helped us get back to where we are today. That's fantastic. And maybe that's where we should start. Maybe you can explain to us a little bit more about Fujitsu's supply capabilities and, and how it's different from other companies that are in the industry. Right. So fr from a manufacturing perspective, uh, we have manufacturing here in the U.S. We have manufacturing in Japan. Our parent company is uh, Fujitsu Limited in, in Japan. Uh, we have other locations in Asia and Europe uh, where we've partnered with other companies uh, who also have expertise in manufacturing. And so uh, collectively, we're manufacturing all over the globe. Uh, we source components all over the globe uh, for, for the vast majority of components. We have multiple sources. So um, we really have a widespread supply chain that is not um, you know, solely focused in, in one area or another. We're, we are a global company and, and uh, as such, uh, manufacture uh, our products globally. Yeah, that's great. So, and, and kind of what I understand is that that's a little different from what we're seeing from lots of competitors. That I've heard that most of them have um, arrangements with like contract manufacturers, but it sounds like um, when you say we have it, it's really Fujitsu manufactures our own products, really. Correct. And that, yep. that's, that sounds unique. So that, that, that's interesting. So maybe we can um, kind of jump back and, and talk a little bit about some of the supply challenges that you've been dealing with over the past two years. And maybe you can just explain to the audience wh what's going on across these industries. Uh, maybe kind of what are these issues um, and, and kind of how they impacted the industry. Right. Um, so I, I would say there's probably not a supply chain out there that, that didn't have some disruption due to, you know, the pandemic and everything. We, of course, experienced um, some major uh, supply, supply issues. A lot of people think it's just components, getting the components. Uh, of course, that was a big piece of it with factories, <clears throat> excuse me, being shut down, um, but also saw logistics delays where uh, airports were, were completely shut down, uh, quarantine, uh, where uh, ocean containers would come to ports and sit there for months and months and months before they were uh, taken off the ships. Um, so we saw it in, in many, many different areas. It, it wasn't uh, just at the, the factory. There was all parts of the supply chain that were impacted by, uh, by these various uh, shutdowns. Yeah, that sounds like a, a huge problem. I think uh, one of the stories I saw was uh, cargo ships being docked outside of LA port for you know, months, basically. Right. Yeah. It used to be that um, when we would ship something by ocean, um, it would take about eight weeks, seven to eight weeks uh, prior to the pandemic. Um, it got as much as four, some cases, five months uh, to get product. Because uh, when the product would come in, one thing to get it off the ship, but then there were not uh, trucks to even get it from the, the port to the end destination. So we're all, as I said, all along the way, there was um, tons of disruptions. Yeah, and, and costs associated with costs that. Costs associated too, with I'm that. Sure. Yep. And then you, you talked about components, how it was difficult to get components. And can you tell us a little bit about what's a standard lead time? I, I know there's a huge range of components, but you know what are typical standard lead times that we were seeing before these disruptions? Mm -hmm. And what were they ballooning up to during the pandemic? Right. Um, starting with the components, really most all the components that we saw had some type of impact with lead times increasing. We saw resistors, capacitors, transistors, uh, all the way up to metals. Uh, ICs was, it has been the biggest area of, of increased uh, lead times. Mm -hmm. um, we saw lead times pr uh, post pandemic or prior to 
pandemic till after uh, double or triple in some cases. And a lot of um, some of the high, um, high uh, technology ICs, uh, the lead times went over a year and, and they've stayed there since, since the, the peak of the lead time increase. That, that's amazing. Like, mm -hmm. Really, I mean, m measuring it in weeks and then to measuring it in months is just a huge impact. And it was over. It was overnight. Yeah. It was uh, not a slow progression to get there. It was the pandemic hit and d global demand went up. People were, were staying at home more now. They needed more. Uh, there was more demand there and factories were shutting down. So lead times went from, as you said, weeks to a year, basically overnight. Yeah, that's amazing. One of the things I've heard a saying I've heard is that unique problems require unique thinking and methods to solve them. Um, maybe you can explain a little bit to us about, you know, in this unique time where overnight lead times went from weeks to months mm -hmm. and logistics times and costs went through the roof, what actions were taken to solve those problems um, and allow us to achieve growth despite those constraints? I think one of the biggest areas, and it seems simple, but one of the biggest areas that we did is put very clear visibility to the, the problem and prioritize the problem. Because through all the supply chain challenges, there were so many problems, so many parts that we needed, so many uh, issues with logistics and, and just getting the, the parts is, we came up with a very clear methodology to put the right focus on the most critical items, whether that be, again, components, uh, getting what's the most important component to get in, to get in who was the supplier, uh, who do we need to meet with to, to, to work that issue, or from a logistics perspective, do we need to change it from ocean to air, or even within air, this, this airport is shut down, we need to reroute it to a different area to, to bypass uh, that. So um, that was a big focus of ours. Uh, that's something I expect uh, us to continue some of those practices even now, because even in a state of normalcy, we still have you know, shortages that, that happen and supply chain disruptions and different things, not to this scale, but um, some things that I think we can you know, continue that practice in. Uh, another, th another item I would say that, that really helped us is uh, meeting with our, our suppliers um, on a face-to-face um, -face basis, but bringing in some of our Fujitsu executives, our business uh, unit heads, uh, to really uh, push the issue and, and uh, really drive uh, improvements from our suppliers um, was, was another big area. Um, I would say last, uh, just the collaboration when we talk about supply chain and Fujitsu being global, uh, one of the areas that um, we, we, uh, we really focused on is, is uh, sharing of material. There's a lot of uh, commonality between products that different Fujitsu's and our partners building from a component perspective. And so one area that, that I personally was, was involved in was uh, looking at global material and could we shift some supply around to better be at the, at the place that, that critically needed it. Um, so those were probably three, three of the biggest items that kind of helped us uh, get through some of the most challenging parts of this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I know this is a topic that's come up a lot. Greater visibility just makes it so much easier to forecast mm -hmm. and, and put that focus on you know, the, the issues that you know you are right. have to solve. So maybe we can transition now and, and you can kind of share with us where we're at today. What is the current state of the supply chain and product lead times at Fujitsu? I would say for most of our products, we are back to a normal state. Um, we've, uh, it's taken a lot to get here. We've, we've done a lot over the last two and a half years to get here. Um, but I think for most of our products, uh, we're now at pretty much pre-pandemic uh, normal state. We do have a few um, isolated areas, uh, some of our access products where we still have um, some near-term challenges. But um, as a whole, I think we're, we're looking good in 23 and um, material is, is becoming more readily available. Uh, our suppliers, the, the feedback they're giving us with um, you know, their, their, their ex expectations on builds of things, I think we are at that, at that point where we are back to pretty much normalcy across the board. It's great to hear that the Fujitsu global supply chain has largely returned to normal and supplies available. Uh, 
what do you see on the horizon for 2023 and anything that the industry should focus on or your team is focusing on? So as returning to normalcy, which I see us uh, at that point, um, one thing I, I expect to see in 2023 is lead times on components to start coming down. We're already seeing uh, some lead times in certain uh, areas come down. Uh, I expect that to continue throughout the year and uh, return hopefully to the levels that we saw uh, prior to the pandemic as our uh, suppliers are um, kind of getting over the hump with some of the areas that we're pacing uh, their production. Um, I think that's a, a big area that we're going to see in 2023. Another area that really kind of uh, came up uh, through the pandemic is some of the older components. Um, some of our manufacturers are uh, or have or are expecting to maybe end of life uh, certain components. Uh, so that's an area that we track very closely and we'll continue to do so and find what the best solution uh, for that is, whether it be replacement, uh, redesign to a different, different uh, component, um, you know, working that through our engineering group to find the best solution. So um, those are two big areas of focus in, in 2023, uh, but all that is pointing towards uh, us returning to a state of, uh, you know, supply chain normalcy. Yeah, and that, that, that's fantastic news. I, I know this has been a huge effort for you, your team, the industry, throughout the last two years. So it's great to hear that we're coming back to normalcy, um, that supply chains are gonna to return to normal, uh, and, and that our customers are gonna be able to, to get the supply they need in a more regular cadence. Yep. So thank you, Todd, for, for coming in, talking to us about the, the supply chain and, and, and where you see it going. Great, glad to be here.